Hello, my name is Mike Beasley. We're doing a tape for the people that think it takes $20,000 to go catch a fish. Believe me, there are people that have spent more than that and still haven't caught a fish. You don't have to have a boat like this one I've got behind me. You don't have to have any boat. But you need to go take your kids fishing. Something they'll never regret and you will, you'll never regret yourself. These are all the tools you need right here. A pair of pliers, needle nose, or regular pliers. Put a sinker on and get a hook out of a fish mouth. The things we're gonna talk about is what you need, like uh, the fishing pole, the line, the sinkers. I, from what I can remember, I think everything cost about $20. And we've still got to get some crickets in a cricket cage or if you want to use worms. But anyway, after you watch this video, you'll be able to go catch a fish. I guarantee it. And you'll be able to take your young and fishing. Even if it's nothing but a little brim about that long, you'll have a lot of fun. Now when we decided to make this film, we talked about what we should do, how we should do it. The main thing is taking them young and fishing. I've got my grandson, he's seven, almost 18 years old. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, and he doesn't fool with drugs. <clears throat> I lost one because of that, and it hurts. But we went and bought some things to keep, uh, keep up with what this cost. And it looks like uh, the department stores are your best bet on a lot of things, like the hooks and the sinkers. One of them was uh, 88 cents for the hooks and 77 cents for the sinkers. They call them split shot. The kind that I got are removable. They're a number, a size number four, there's 22 a pack. And that's not a bad price. Then the hooks, I mean, yeah, the hooks they're here, they're a size six, 20 to a box. And these are little bitty things and they are sharp that will get your attention real quick. Now this size, or maybe a little bit bigger, but th now this, this right here will be fine to start with. The more you start fishing, the more you'll start realizing the things that you need. See that little hook compared to my finger, it's not very big, but you've got to realize you're going to be catching some fish that are about that long. You might get into a bunch of them that are like that, and you might do like I've done before and get into a bunch of them that are about like that. Little, little bitty things. But they're a ball to catch. We sit out there one day all day long and didn't do anything but catch a little brim. Caught some big ones too. The other thing you'll need is a float. They've got these <coughs> with a spring on top. This is the best kind. These run about 70, 80 cents a piece. These are about a dollar, and I don't suggest them because they're plastic, just hollow plastic. And if you cast out or, or toss your line out and it hits a rock, they'll crack. When they crack, they'll sink. So, but this is it's right here. This float is the ideal float to use. It's solid, it's made out of a, a cork or wood or whatever, but it floats, it don't break. Well, let me take it back. It, it doesn't sink. I've had them so beat up, the tops broke off of them, dog chewed them in half and still used them. They still floated. But it's, it, it's this is something we, you can do any day. It don't make any difference where you, what, just go fishing. That's all you gotta do. And this is all the equipment you need. You don't need a $400 rod and reel. No one guy paid over that for just the reel. And that's ridiculous to go out there and catch the same kind of fish he's probably going to catch. And this thing, like, it gave me a heart attack. I bought, I, not too long ago, I bought one of these, paid $2 for it. I went and bought this one to show y'all. And this thing was $8. It kind of gone up. Well, and the government put their taxes in there, and they, you know how they stick us all. They do a good job there. Let me get this pack of line undone here. <clears throat> now, it, this, this 
cane pole right here comes in a set. It's got line, float, hook, sinker, all that. And that's it. It's about like the other plastic float. Just throw it away at home. Don't throw it away out there at the lake because we saw a big buzzard one time that had, uh, or a vulture, whatever you call them. I think it's a buzzard. That had got hung and somebody, somebody got hung up in a tree and a line had wadded up. He landed on it, got his leg wrapped around it, and he was so high up nobody could get to him, and he died that way. And that, that was that was pitiful. So be sure to throw all this away. Anything that's plastic, like Coca-Cola rings, things like that, throw whatever else you want away, but don't throw any of this stuff in the water or leave it laying around. But now we're going to put this on the cane pole. Oh, by the way, this line, I bought it. <clears throat> Most places like these dollar and under, everything, nothing over a dollar. I've got this line for a dollar a spool. This is a 10 pound test line. Because when you're out there fishing for a brim, my grandson has got quite a few surprises. He caught a six pound catfish one time. Usually that'll happen about, well, about an hour before dark, up till dark. And you don't really need to be around these places until you get used to them because you might have somebody else fishing with you that you don't know about. And you sure don't want him to sneak up on you and that's a big old black cotton mouth. And not all of them are black, some of them are red. But come, when put, there's a line eye in here, put it through the eye, bring it all the way back, about, about 18 inches, and tie it five or six times real good, get, a cup, get some good knots in it, and that way make sure it doesn't come loose on you because a lot of people tie it on the end of that eye, but I don't like to do that because it's awful small up there at the end. So when you've got this knot on here good, and you sure pretty sure it won't come loose. Just take it, clip it off, clip off your extra line. Then you're ready to go. I always put just a little bit more line on here. A lot of people will put them right to the length of the pole like that or a little bit longer. You won't go just about a foot or so longer. That's so if a if you catch a brim, <clears throat> these things are so funny about the way they they come up on a piece of bait. Some of them will just attack it. But some of them will come up under the bottom and suck on it and draw it in and they'll never make your float move. And you'll lift your line up all of a sudden and there's a little brim on it and he's done swallowed hook and all. Well, when he does that, don't try to pull your hook out or anything. Just take a, take a pair of clippers or a knife or something cut the line off and let him go. His stomach acids will dissolve the hook. Then that way you won't, you won't kill him. And then you'll have plenty of line to go ahead and put your new hook and another sinker on. It don't take but just a minute. And I'm gonna show you just how, how quick it is. If I can pick his hook up. These things are so little. Like I said, they're sharp too, so be careful with them. I'll show you how to get a hook out before we get through if I don't forget about it. And these things are sharp. You can stick one in your finger so fast it'll, it'll go in and you won't realize it. Just tie you some knots in it. Let's put a couple in here. Then run it through the aisle one more time if this line will go through there. Yeah. Just put you about four or five knots in it. So you get four, five, six good knots in it. Pull it tight. And then clip it. Clip it up, clip off your extra string like we did before. And then we'll put the sinker on. Now there's an important part in this. When you put one on, use a pair of pliers. Don't bite it. I did that and cracked a tooth. 
after about $800, I didn't do that anymore because that's what one tooth cost. Just take your pair of pliers and you don't have to put it on there real, squish it real, real flat, just close it. So you've got the other end to where if you want to take this off and put it up, take your pliers and squeeze that and it'll open back up, put it back in your sack. Now these floats, what we're going to do here, for right now we're just going to put it about 18 inches. Just pull your, pull your spring back. And it's got a little slot in here. It's a vertical slot, a horizontal slot, and then a vertical one. See there how it's got that, uh, where you put your line in and then it goes up? I didn't think this one would hold up, float on as well, but it does. It's better than the old ones we used to use. It's supposed to be so you can do it like that, and that's all you got to do. But I like to go ahead and wrap it around one more time because I've cast out there before and the line went that way and the uh, float went way over there. So, my friend, you are ready to catch a fish. All we need is some crickets. And we're gonna get them next. So if you'll get all this ready, we'll be ready to catch some fish and I'll guarantee it. Okay, now you've got the basics ready. You got the pole, you got the pole. We can go catch a brim. But there's one thing don't forget. I don't know how the laws are in your state. In Tennessee, I think it's 16, you have to buy a fishing license. So you got to pay the devil his due. They got another, another kind of tax on you. Believe me, a third of this is tax. But uh, there's some other things you want to think about before you go fishing. You need to wear you some, some good comfortable shoes, some p long pants. Don't wear shorts if you're going into bushes. You're going to get ticks on you, mosquito bites, and all those other fun things that go along with fishing. <coughs> Excuse me. And you need to get you some kind of insect repellent, some kind of bug spray that you can put on you that maybe halfway works, if there is such a thing. And then when you get home, you want to check them kids to make sure they don't have any on any ticks or anything like that on them. Because the places where we're going, some of them are okay, some of them you get you brush through, brush up against a lot of trees and shrubs and things like that, and that's where your ticks come from. And don't take your dog with you because you have to put him on a leash or he'll get in trouble. If there's a snake out there, he'll find it and he might get bit. So until you learn, know where you're going, no, I, I wouldn't suggest taking the animal with you. And I did have one that wouldn't get, get out of other people's boat. So he liked to go boat riding a lot. But now we're gonna go get ready and get the license, get the bait. And as soon as I can find out what my grandson did with my cricket cage, I'm going to show that to you and we'll be on the way. What we've got here is a half a tube of crickets. I don't know how many that is or anything, but it's $1.75 for a half a tube and $3 for a whole tube. That's the best bait besides uh, the larva in a wasp nest you can use. But believe me, those wasp nest larvae are awful expensive, or they can be. One of them big old red hornets pops you. Let's see if we can catch some fish now. Well, now we finally get to try out all this stuff that we bought. We had to buy a couple other things. We bought uh, tube of, half a tube of crickets, it was $1.75. Gonna put the cricket on, stick him right to his little rear, come out about the top of his head, as good as you can close, as close as you can come, brother. Now watch this. <coughs> I'm gonna show you how you you gotta find them first. <coughs> you leave it there for a couple of minutes. If they don't bite right away, start easing it back. You might be in water too deep. Ease it back in, 
get where the water's not quite as deep. But see, all up under here is rock. And that's where the brim stay because crawdads and bugs and all that get up under these rocks and they wait for them to hatch their eggs and stuff and then they eat them. It won't take but just a minute and you'll get you one. Up, oh, got too shallow. Try it again. Now see how I've thrown it out there like that? Just start easing it in. Let's try it about right there. And this takes a minute. You not only have to catch a fish out here to have a good time and get, get by yourself, get away with your kids. And women like this too, but they don't like the part about putting the crickets on there. Old Bill Dance always said whenever you take your kids fishing, you'll always know where they are. And I've taken all mine fishing, and it's sure been a blast. I've had a lot of fun with them. Yeah, maybe he's not in here right there. Let me try over here. These little things, you can't eat them. Because most of them are too little. But they are a ball to catch. Because they are all over this area. They just get in here in packs, and they pack around all these rocks, and there'll be 30 or 40 or 50 of them. And when you find them, you just sit there and just start wearing them out. Just as fast as you can get your line in there eventually, whenever you find them. I've got some places I can go that are a lot better than this to fish. It's just that this one was close to the house, and that's supposed to be the meaning of all this. It's some place close to home, and you can just run out there and go catch you some fish, just play for a little while when you got some time. There's nothing like taking your kid fishing, though. Now, if I don't catch one dragging it back in here in just a minute, I'm going to set my float dip deeper, and then we're going to throw out closer to that buoy, because they might be deeper. They might have a front coming in, anything like that. I can't tell whether something's hitting it or whether it's the waves doing it. When them little bitty ones pick on it, <coughs> them, it'll do just like this, but the waves will do the same thing because of the sinker. One thing about these little brim, they're good at stealing bait, too. Just keep walking up and down the bank. That's all you can do until you find them, and when you find them, you're there. Yeah, they're out there. They just cleaned all my bait off. The little bitty ones come up and get it. All right, now we're gonna try another spot. Maybe there's a fish here. There you go. There's your brim. There's your big one right there, folks. That's what you're after right there. It might not be big. You might not be able to eat it. But you and the kids will have a ball catching these all day long. Put us another cricket on here. Try again. There we go. There we go. Ah. <laughs> Fighter. Monster. I have him mounted. We finally found them. Even though this is, this is a brim, it's a member of the bass family. It's one of the bass's favorite foods. So you can possibly catch, you might hook up 
10 pound bass. I mean, you've got just as good a chance as anybody else and you're fishing with what the, the, their natural food. There we go, there we go. There he is, see, got him, there he is. <laughs> he's a little fighter, he's not very big, but he fights. But you can sit here and catch him just as fast as you can get your line in the water. He's a little bitty thing, ain't he? These little things are fun to catch. We put some in an aquarium one time about that size. About four of them. We stopped and got them some crickets. And all night long, it sounded like somebody's in the house shooting a 22 rifle, them hitting them crickets. Let's see if he's got a brother out there. Got him, I had him, lost him. We finally found him. I got a little piece of a cricket left to try it. He's even lower than the last ones. See there, we've got hadn't fished three minutes, done caught three uh, three brim. And that's how fast you can do it, and this is fun. I mean, you can't have no more fun than this right here. Put another cricket on here, and I bet you I got another one in just a minute. It takes longer to put the cricket on when I can catch the, the way it takes to catch the brim. All right, let's catch number four. Yeah, that ain't where I had it. Yeah, he got me. Hey, they're fast. I mean, they can. Y'all see what they can do to a minnow. There we go. Got him. There. Ah! You wanna help me get him in? <laughs> Look at this. Now these fish are small, but you hold your hand like this, and when he's not flopping, come down on him. Don't just grab hold of this fish. Just work it out. You've got to be careful. He's got fins that will stick you in a heartbeat, and I mean they hurt. So you just rub your hand down him and pull him out and I always let them go. We'll catch him later. But you can do this all day long if you want to. I mean, it is a ball. Now let's see if there's one more out there. Now if you've been fishing for a few minutes, say a minute or so, and your float hadn't moved or jumped or anything like that, Pick it up and see if it's got any bait on it. Those little brim can get up there and steal a cricket real quick. Another thing, you'll catch some big fish in here. Oh, missed him. I mean, we're just catching little bitty fish, but there are some big brim in here. I saw one guy catch a five pound bass fishing in the same, doing the same thing. So you never know, it's, it, this is like going on a treasure hunt or something. You, you never know what you're gonna reel in when something gets your line. Give me another cricket on there. Here we go. I missed him, but he didn't miss me. All right, let's give her one more try. Now, one thing you got to realize about what you're watching on this tape, I'm not trying to sell bait. I'm not trying to sell lures, fishing poles, or nothing. I'm just trying to teach you how to catch your fish, catch your fish, take your kids to do it. Out of these boats.
Now we started out over where we parked the truck. We've probably covered about maybe a hundred yards, something like that. Not very much. You just gotta keep, you gotta walk and, and, and find them. Just sit there and change your depth. It's, it's not hard. It's, there's no rocket science, science to it. It's just, uh, just a matter of finding them. Just keep looking. You get some exercise. You, you spend time with your kids. The whole nine yards is none of this time is a waste. None of it all. And if you're not catching any fish, just move down a few feet or so. There, you get under some rock structure where all these brim are. They got to get something around where they can run into and hide. And you get close to them, you find them. That's all she wrote. And you can catch them all day long. They got me. Put one more on here and I'm ready to go. When you catch one of these little crickets, you start in his rear, stick the hook in, try to come out some <coughs> excuse me, try to come out somewhere around his head, like that. That's how the cricket goes on there. That gets the best results. And you, the worm's the same way, you just thread him on there. There we go. Ah. He grabbed him. I don't know if I, let me try him one more time. He might, might be enough cricket left on there. There's one thing else you gotta remember when you're doing this. There's no way you can mess up. Just be sure to get you a license. Because if you don't, you'll know how much it costs to go fishing whenever you see that judge. And they do charge dearly. Like going through the lot. He didn't get me that quick, did he? I believe he did. No? Now after after you sit there for a minute or so, if your float hasn't moved, if it hadn't made any erratic actions or anything like a fish is hitting it or playing with it. Check it and make sure you got still got bait on it. And if you're not catching anything, don't get frustrated. Just move it over just a few feet and, and you could be two feet away from them, being right on the outskirts of them. There we go. There's the last one right there. This is it, folks. We're going to wrap it up. That's a good one, too. <laughs> He's maybe as big, a little bit bigger than the rest of them. A little sunfish or a perch, brim. I think it's different from a perch. Believe it or not, this is a bass. It's just a little bitty brim is what we call them. And these right here can be more fun than anything you've ever fished for before in your life. But then the reason I'm talking to you, you're the first time fisherman. Take your kids out there and enjoy it. You can have a ball fishing for these things. You won't get no trophies from TV or anything else, but you'll get trophies from your kids. You know, it's a little bit of work when you, especially when you get old. Hell, I'm 52 years old. I mean, look at my shirt. The, hum the humidity here is ungodly. I mean, the dew falls at 11:30 at night. Usually, it's supposed to fall at four or five o'clock in the morning. That's how hot it is here. But this is something you can do with your kids. You spend $25 not including gas. This whole video has probably taken us 
an hour and a half, maybe two hours to make. Not, not including going to get the license in, in the crickets now. But that's not a lot of time when you talk about the fun you can have, especially with your kids. You're not, I'm not gonna guarantee you any big fish or can't guarantee you any fish, but if they're there, you'll catch a few of them. You'll have fun doing it. It's something that you can always think back on. You talk about, yeah, remember when we took Bubba fishing and he fell in the water? There'll always be something about that you can talk about. I've never heard any family that had ever gone fishing that didn't have a fishing tail.